what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and i got a very special guest for you guys today once again it is lady j you probably know her from ig at lady j bookums she drops a lot of great information she brings a lot of great insights so you guys should go ahead and follow our instagram page i'm gonna tell you that now but i think if you aren't convinced by me telling you then you'll be convinced by the end of the interview so i'm gonna hop right into it and let you guys get to know her as we go all right so what's up lady j what's going on just to start things off let's give everybody an idea of like what do you do how do you what do you consider yourself in the game are you still trying to figure it out or are you just a are you a general um business person pr um, I wouldn't say PR, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so it's not that I'm still trying to figure it out, but I am still evolving and growing and learning. Um, but basically what I do, I do like many things and I wear many hats when it comes to the industry. I work a lot with independent artists. So, you know, I help them to establish themselves as artists, um, help them learn how to promote their music, some marketing, um, you know, branding, getting their image together when, when it comes to like, you know, on social media, their presence, and also knowing the things that it takes to actually just build a career as an independent artist. Mm. So a lot of times, like you said on Instagram, you know, I do drop a lot of information on Instagram. Uh, I also have courses mm -hmm. that I create and I offer to independent artists. So it's different courses. Um, just about putting together a successful campaign or a campaign in general, focusing on a specific single, things of that nature. And then I also do more broad type of courses for like any influencer or entrepreneur, artist, whoever, model. Um, and I do like Instagram courses as well. So nice. really I start to develop these courses because I get a lot of people who just ask me all these questions. So I'm like, let me, put together a how to because I don't have time to really sit there and answer everybody's question at one time. So yeah. I put the courses, put it out there and people just been eating it up. Right. I know exactly how you feel. That's how I started to create like little products and things like that just to help them out. But I can't, I can't help everybody out individually. Right. So I get it. So I think that's dope that you're immediately still trying to figure certain things out because so many people just act like they know exactly what they're doing or they are, the man or the woman at this point of wherever they are. Um, right. So many pieces, just like on an artist side, on a business side, like there's all these new things. you like, you think, oh, I could do this. And then you learn about this new part of the game. You're like, oh, I didn't even know about this. Like every day, it seems like, right? So exactly. what, what part of the game do you say that you are strong at right now um, that you just, or that you've taken a strong liking to in terms of how you're helping artists out? Um, I would think, I would just say it's more of the education for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been working with independent artists since like 2012, like really establishing myself with independent artists um, because I come from working in studios, interning, all that different stuff. Mm -hmm. So 2012 is when I really stepped out from other people's shadow and I started to do my own thing. I started to throw showcases um, in Atlanta. So I was doing all kinds of showcases. We was doing strip club tours. We like anywhere I can have artists performing. Yeah. I started to do that. And that's really how I started to build myself. But that really like drew me into the indie scene more so than like majors. Mm. Um, because it's like, you know, we all start indie as whatever we're doing doesn't matter what mm. you're doing. You all start out as that beginning person. So I was always kind of drawn to that aspect of the industry. So now my main thing is just about education um here in texas you know I, we have a, a multimedia studio so we have a, a recording studio here we have a photo studio here so we're constantly around just entertainers um different types of creatives and i think the thing that kind of keeps me on my toes is the fact that it's like it is like you said it's always something new going on so mm -hmm. it's always something new to learn and even just by me getting asked questions, it's some things that I don't even know. You know, when people ask me certain things and I literally got to be like, I'll be on Google, you know, trying to figure it out. I'll buy a book and stuff like that. So for me, it's just all about knowledge because I really want to um, just help my artists, my indie artists win and just help them understand that we're just in a time where like internet is popping, media is popping. You can really get so many things done without having that dream of being like signed, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So that's my main thing of just getting everybody the education so that they don't have no excuses or they don't have no, you know, only if I had this or only if I could do this. Like, yeah. I want to eliminate that, you know? Yeah, we're getting to the point where that won't be an excuse for a lot of artists. Okay. There are people who are putting that information out there. Now, you touched on the fact that you were running them showcases and things like that. That's a specific experience that I would love more insight on in terms of what did you, what did you learn when you were running those showcases? Like, were you one of the main people who were marketing in showcases, setting it up? What was that lifestyle like? I learned like business from doing that because when I got into it, like, you know, in Atlanta, I was working at a, um, a recording studio called Hot Beats Recording Studio. So mm -hmm. it's like, Hot Beast is a more prominent studio in Atlanta. You'll hear it in like Drake songs and different people's songs. So when I got there, um, you know, that was probably the first time I really was exposed to like all these major people. Uh, they had a major clientele. But I worked there for about four years, you know, moved up and I ended up getting fired mm. just by having like a dispute with the owner, which we're, we're really cool. And it was one of those like fire that like touched my soul. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going back. He didn't really mean it. And I think he waited for me to come back and be like, you're going to get my job back. But I never did. So when that happened, I was like super devastated because that had become my life. Like I literally was in the studio from sunup to sundown, mm -hmm. you know, around all these celebrities. So I met someone just out at a networking event that was like hey i do these shows you know i work with artists you know basically was like you want to do this with me like run promotion so i'm like sure so that's kind of how i got into it with this person and, and you know we started running shows but i quickly realized like i'm doing all the work like i'm out here networking i'm talking to everybody because yeah. you know now i'm like i'm trying to build something here and we once we did like the first show we had a nice amount of artists I started to really hit the scene, just going out to different showcases, just talking to every single artist that came off the stage. And the more we did it, the more that I realized, like, this person, like, I don't even need you because, like, you're not doing as much as I'm doing, but you're expecting all this money. So I started to really learn about how to conduct business, you know, dealing with a so-called partner, dealing with money, dealing with responsibility. Yeah. Um, dealing with attitudes and personalities because now I'm juggling like all these artists. So it, it kind of like started building me as that entrepreneur. So as I broke off from this person, you know, I started to just do my own shows. So from that point on, I always did it by myself. Now I always had people included, like I would reach out to different sponsors because a lot of my shows were like contest based. Um, so, you know, I reach out to different sponsors who will be offering everything from like interviews to, um, spinning music on yeah. different like online radio stations where the BDS was getting tracked. Um, just whatever I can find of value to offer to like a contestant, a winner, yeah. I would just reach out to all of these people. So I started to just really be get like popular in Atlanta from, from doing these shows. And as I started to do more, I'm like, okay, artists, they want to start performing in the strip club. So I started to go to the promoters and we started setting up strip club tours where they would do like a three strip club tour, you know, in Atlanta, just three different clubs. They would get a bottle, they would get a table. It was like a package deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, before you get go far, farther, how did you connect with the promoters for the strip clubs? Just going and popping up. Okay. And I tell people like networking is as simple as opening your mouth. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, when I go to places, and this is one thing that I teach in my courses with my artists, I always tell them, like, to do some research first. If you if there's an event, then you can find out ahead of time who is throwing the event, who's a part of it, who's the DJ, who everybody that has a role, you can really figure out who these people are so that by the time you get there, you already know who you need to talk to. You can talk to all the random people around, but you need to talk to the key people so that the next time they throw an event, your name comes up because now they made a connection with you or keep going to their events. So now they start to know you. So for me, I had to start going to the strip club. That's the, the, the one reason why I started to go to the strip club. Cause I never was like a strip club type of girl before that, but I started to go to the strip clubs just to kind of connect with the promoters um, and, and just see what the scene was like. And that's how I realized like, okay, a lot of these artists like performing in the strip club. And then I got into the strip club scene so 
one thing led to another. I just started talking to one of like uh, a promoter out there that's like really um, known. You know, he's like a big. He was like big a big deal around that. He still is, but I went to him and I talked to him. I'm like, look, what do I got to do to get artists in here on a consistent basis? So we put together a package. He was like, I'll charge you this much. So I'm like, okay, you're going to charge me this much, which means I got to charge this much. And then boom, we're going to rent it. So yeah. we started to do that. I had artists coming in, you know, it was like stipulations. They had to throw money at the girls while they're performing. And, but they got a bottle, they got a table. You know, I had people in there with the camera to, um, you know, just ca capture footage and, yeah. you know, just different things. Oh. But I learned um, how to do it better, mm. you know, because it was certain things that I couldn't control. Like, when they would perform you know what time they would perform so it was like certain things that would happen out of my control and i was like you know it's always evolving but, yeah. but like that's kind of how i got into that you were like if you do it again you know how to make get better value out of it for the artist right okay that's i mean that's a dope business i mean i know a lot of artists definitely do <laughs> like to perform in the strip club it's because it makes them look good that's that whole social thing yeah that's you know yeah. In Atlanta, it's it's a cool thing. Uh, I, I think it depends on what city you is. In Atlanta, around the time that I was doing it, showcases were, like, really big. Now, now it's like the showcase scene kind of died down out there. But when I was doing it, it was a real big thing. They were having showcases, like, Monday, at least, like, Monday through Wednesday, sometimes Thursday. It was normally during the week. But it kind of died down. But back then, it was really popping, like. Yeah, the, the artists are out on the scene. You know, in Atlanta, it's like you always can see like famous people in right. a strip club. So, I mean, when I think about showcases, I always get questions from artists and um, you know, about showcases because there's a negative okay. thing with showcases. Me too. I did a video on it. You know, should artists pay to perform? Yeah, I did a video oh, on my Instagram about it, and you know, I got a lot of like. Eh. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta hear your perspective since you did showcases yourself. What's your perspective on showcases? So for me, I think it's a yes and no. So in my video, I say this: it depends on you know where you are as an artist. Mm -hmm. For a lot of new artists, and you know, some people they've been recording music for a while, but they're still new because they don't really know what they're doing. They still haven't excelled at all. So you still new, right? So for those type of artists, it's good to do showcases because that's where you're going to get practice. That's where you, you know, get your feet in the door to kind of network, build relationships with audience, start to build relationships with um, the promoters, the DJs. You know, one thing that I, my favorite line is the best relationships are built through transactions. I think independent artists have a lot of, you know, animosity or they, or they always feel a way about having to pay for things. But they don't understand that when you spend money with people, they will spend something on you too. You yeah. know, so for me, I do showcases and I definitely charge artists. But one thing that I learned, because when I started to throw showcases, it was just only what I knew from what I seen. So I was just charging artists. It still wasn't a lot, but I was just charging them. As I started to do more, it was like a big thing for me to give value instead of just take money. If there's showcases just, you pay your $50 or 25 or whatever it is, you get on stage for a couple minutes and you out of there. So yes. that's, you know, the value may not be there. It depends on you. You, Like I said, if you scope the scene, you know who's going to be there. You know who you need to talk to. You know, that's how you start to benefit from it. A lot of artists just get on stage and perform, whether they paying to perform or not. And that's where they mess up. You know, you got to have a goal when you're doing anything. So my shows has evolved. Even I do shows in Texas here. Um, so my shows actually come with a full package. So you get a photo shoot, you get um, a promo video, you get um, edited pictures, you get edited like an artist reel. And the performance is like the icing on the cake. And it's not like 20 artists, it's like 10 artists. So it's really for you guys. So what's your, that package that you pay for is really for the services that you get because you walk out of here with professional pictures. You walk out of here with your artist reel that you can use to promote. You walk right. out of here with a, like an in-studio video. You know, you walk out of here with value. And that's how my shows kind of evolved over the years um, because I just wanted to get value. So I think when it comes to an artist performing, you just gotta know what you're paying for it and figure out how to use it to your best ability, you know? And I, that's just where it's at. Cause this big artist that still pay to get on 
these big tours. That's true. A lot of people, a lot of artists that, you know, they're not like a, a B or C lister, but they might be like that D, you know, they in there, but they ain't in there. They still paying to get on these big, these big tours at first until they can get in the door and, you know, not have to pay no more. So it's, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it can, it's a yes and it's a no. It just depends on you. I understand what you're saying. You have to analyze a situation individually for yourself. You know, exactly. Um, you can't just generalize all showcases. Some might be more opportunity opportunity in the other but I do my most common answer for me personally is the practice thing like if, if you can't find any shows I mean any place where there's a whole bunch of open mics that actually make sense you know pay to get in front of a crowd people pay to go to the gym and practice that you know like okay. it's all the same thing that's just exactly. something I'm interested in. like I think the disconnect is when people expect to like blow up or get signed off of showcases or get right showcases but another thing that I tell people is like you know, first of all, if you ain't getting booked, then you won't have to pay somebody. But if you feel as though you don't want to pay for a show, I tell them to, you know, put on your own show, you know, but when you put on your own show, you'll see why people have to charge you because now you're paying for a venue. Yeah. Now you're paying for promotion. Now yeah. you have people under you that you have to, you know, monitor and, yeah. you know, you have all these responsibilities and things have to be paid for and it's free. So now you will realize why Somebody got to pay you something for it to make sense, you know? Most artists can't even show up with 10 people to support them. Yeah. Well, so, you know, I tell them, like, hey, if you don't want to perform, take on, I mean, if you don't want to pay to perform, take on that responsibility yourself. And then you see how difficult it is to put a show together, especially when nobody knows you anyway. Yeah. You know, and, and see how that goes. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think more artists should try that. That's that's I think that's a great recommendation. Outside of the fact that you, once you do that, you get a little bit more business savvy. It helps art, exactly. artists and organization. Um, what's the name of your company, by the um, by the way, again for everybody out there? Um, so my company, when it comes to my promotion and stuff, is the Indie Artist Blueprint. So right. you'll normally see me tag that. You'll normally see um, all of my courses and everything are under the Indie Artist Blueprint. Now, our business that we have here I'm def is definitely Never Satisfied Productions. So that is our our studios, Never Satisfied Productions. We do events. Um, I am an event coordinator also, which I deal more with corporate events. But mm -hmm. Never Satisfied is definitely the home team, which you see me. This is one of our jackets. Yeah. And in my videos on Instagram, you'll see me in a lot of our logo stuff. Um, we do have an online store. We we do like many things. Um, so you'll always see me in that. So never satisfied is definitely it. Dope. Dope. So I want to switch gears real quick and talk a little bit more about your journey personally. Because, uh, you know, we had a short minute to speak. You were talking about how you went from Atlanta. I mean, from Maryland to Atlanta. You were went to Art Institute, you dropped out. Like I wanna give that picture of you finding yourself because I know a lot of people are they get thrown into the industry or they're trying to feel their way throughout the industry. So right. like talk more about you getting kicked out of college first. Well, let me say so first, you know, I, I did graduate one college for business management in Pennsylvania. So I moved from Maryland to Pennsylvania, graduated, went to college um, in Pennsylvania. And then I moved to Atlanta. So the okay. thing was, and this, I'm really glad that I didn't finish, but because one thing that artists do or just certain people, they don't really know what they want to go for. So I went to school for audio engineering because like I said, I was in, okay. in music. I, I write music Okay. Um, also. So for me, it was like, I want to learn as much as I can so that I don't have to rely on people. So, you know, I was writing music, but then I always had to like wait for an engineer uh, one of my brothers or somebody to like record me and make it sound good because I didn't know a lot about how to record myself. So that's what made me want to, you know, go to school for audio engineering. And so that's why I moved to Atlanta. So I was in school, you know, I'm in Atlanta for the first time. I'm like, I'm hype, you know, coming from Pennsylvania or come just coming from up north, you know, never been to the south before. Um, so I was in school for about like three months. Everything was going good. I was in my classes and everything, but I actually ended up getting kicked out of college because I couldn't get any more loans. Now, mm -hmm. for anybody who went to the Art Institute, the Art Institute is really like famous for people getting kicked out of school because of this whole loan situation. It's a really expensive school. 
Um, so I got kicked out and I was, I actually like moved out of my apartment back home. So, you know, it's like when I got kicked out, it was like, yo, I can't go back home. Cause I don't, I don't even have my own apartment no more. So I literally had to make a choice. Like, you know, okay, am I going to go back up North and live with my mom and try to figure things out? Or I'm going to just thug it out. So what I did was I moved all my stuff out of my dorm. I made like great, great connections with people while I was there in those little three months. So I literally started like hopping from dorm to dorm from people who would just let me stay. And that's because right before I got kicked out is when um, I started working at the studio. So it was like, I was working there and I'm like, I ain't trying to leave here. I've been seeing a famous person every day since I started working here. I I was learning stuff. So I'm like, yo, I got to stay in Atlanta. So I literally was like living dorm to dorm. Anybody who would let me stay, you know, they would give me keys and I would just be good. And that's how I lived for like the first two years of me being in Atlanta. I was just kicking it. I was working at the studio, but I was really like just still figuring out life. When I first moved to Atlanta, I was just, I was like 21, you know? Mm. So, yeah, you know, me getting kicked out of school was probably like the best thing because I, I really didn't need to go to school for audio engineering. When I started working at Hot Beats, it was more of the hands-on experience. And I think that's what a lot of artists need or just people who want to be in the industry they more so need that hands-on like you need to be in the field and yeah, i'm not telling nobody don't go to school you know i get it, I get it. it's that, just a completely but... different field in the college i mean than a classroom actually being amongst people seeing how people think and operate right exactly because even in those first months i was like man when are we going to get to like when are we going to get in the studio we you know they was taking us through all this like math and all this other stuff that I didn't come here for you know so you know me getting in the studio was like they asked you like well what is it that you want to do what is it that you want to learn so they start letting you you know sit in on sessions and um just kind of be under the engineers and and all the different producers that came through and just starting to build a rapport with artists you know you got famous people that nobody really gets to see on a daily basis that know your name you know so now I'm like sitting in sessions with future and you know met drake and all these different people so I, I actually really got to learn way more being in that studio and then you know doing all the other things that i did after that but school yeah it kicked me out it was like oh you gotta go and i'm like well, where i'm supposed to go and it was like i don't know but you gotta get out this dorm you can't come back to class i was like oh my god so which, what brought you to texas then so after being in Atlanta for a while, you know, I was kind of getting antsy, like I want to do something, but my, I had two brothers who have been living in Texas for a while. So my younger brother, you know, he had, he was a part of Never Satisfied, like building up Never Satisfied along mm-hmm. with the CEO, you know, they've been best friends for years. So not only do we have Never Satisfied, but like I said, we have a partner company, which is more our family company, which deals with corporate events. But my brother was like, man, you know, I want you to come here. I want you to be more apart. Like, I feel like we can get things popping here. You know, um, a lot of my siblings are just entrepreneurs. You know, they just build stuff on their own. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to come. So I came and I was out here for a few months. I was like back and forth to Atlanta. And literally a few months after, it wasn't even a year after I moved here, you know, my brother is getting me just caught up with everything that's going. He's teaching me stuff. You know, we press a lot of our own uh, clothes. Every, he's just teaching me everything. And we actually ended up getting into um, a car accident out here on the highway. Um, sep- it was September, 2016. We got into, a, we got hit by a tractor trailer and um, my brother ended up getting injured. You know, I had like bruises and swelling and stuff, but you know, my brother, he, something hit him in the head. So he ended up in the hospital for like five days and he actually passed away after five days. So it was like, you know, I came here because you wanted me to come here. And then, you know, we get into this accident and he passes away after like a month of me being here. So I literally had to make the decision um, because my oldest brother moved to Atlanta when I was moving here. So it was just my younger brother. So I had to make a decision like, you know, either I'm going to stay here because my brother just built a lot of things up everything that's here he was kind of like the heart of this company Mm. so it was like if I don't stay here the owner he was so hurt you know he was going to shut everything down you know because my brother wasn't here anymore so 
I just made the choice. And, you know, at the time, I kind of felt more obligated than anything else and, and even more connected because, you know, this, like, I walk these halls and he's everywhere. If I took the computer through the hallway, you would see paintings of him, like, everywhere. Mm. Um, but I made the choice to stay here, you know, even though he passed away and I basically, like, stepped into his shoes here and brought a little or a little bit of, you know, the things that I do. So I actually just started, like, a whole bunch of new stuff here, you know. I started doing my shows, something that they weren't used to, you know, having here. I did shows here. I started bringing new clients in and, and just kind of finding my way. And that's what kind of just got me to Texas and, and kept me in Texas, I should say. Oh, man, that's that's a hell of a story. That's a hell of a story. I'm sorry to hear about your brother, too. That's, Thank you. That's a lot. Um, so with that being said, I mean, you. one thing I've heard at least twice in this interview it's choice, right? Like you, you yeah. seem to take that very seriously. Are you, um, I don't know, are you very like spiritual and focused in how you approach your work? I am, let's see, spiritual. I don't know if I would say spiritual, but you know, I, I do believe like God don't make no mistakes and I, I don't really believe in consequence, like um, not consequence, but um, I don't believe in things happening by accident. You know, mm -hmm. I think that Things are things happen because they're meant to be, and um, based on the the choice that you make, you know you always have a path that can go this way and go can go this way. And I feel like you know, depending on which way you go, you know, the things that happen is is just set. You know, so for me, even coming here when I had to go through that whole situation of losing my brother, you know, that was probably the worst thing that I've ever been through in life and, and my brother was like you know my ace you know mm -hmm. very very close so going through that situation I had a period where it was real dark for me and that's not really my personality to be sad I'll probably be like angry before I'm sad but okay. I had to get to a place where I could not justify what was going on but just tell myself like you know this had to happen, you know, and when I think of the events, even me moving here, I feel like, you know, God brought me here and allowed me to spend these last months with my brother because I was living in Atlanta. He was living in here. So it's not like we saw each other all the time, but it really gave me the opportunity to spend the last moments with my brother, you know, uh, and it was like he was training me and we didn't even know it. We, he was training me to take over. Mm -hmm. everything that he was doing and even add my own spin to it so that's why when i look at it you know we can choose to remain in a in a sad place or we can choose to to see like the positive in it and and choose to do something about it you know and so i just chose to, to look at the situation like you know i was meant to come here like my brother was gonna die regardless because that was just and that was just a part of his life um the way I look at it, I felt like it was just, or, you know, it was already ordered. So I feel blessed that I was able to come here, that he was able to spend time with me. He was able to teach me. We were able to build, you know, those last moments. And I was able to keep something going after him passing that meant so much to him. So I always feel like it was just meant to be at the end of the day. So I think that perspective is um, amazing just because so many people, especially like artists um, and people just moving within the music industry are always dealing with ups and downs, you know, outside of just work, they, they have the life, but the work brings enough ups and downs um, and, and a lot of setbacks. So I think that's definitely gonna help some people out there. Um, I'm glad you shared that. When, um, you. just to switch gears real quick. Now, you're a woman in the music industry. I've gotten asked quite a bit um, by women how do you go about networking? Um, how do you go about networking and being taken seriously? Because they always talk about, hey, you know, you're supposed to build these relationships, but I don't want to be perceived as um, like I'm trying to build a personal, intimate relationship. Right. All these things, right? And you know the experience far better than I could ever imagine. Right. Tell me, give me some tips, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, first of all, I always tell people, like, people are going to treat you the way you treat yourself. Mm. Okay. So, you know, if you are a female and you step into the room 
treating treating yourself a certain way and when i when i say that i mean you know the way that you look the way that you carry yourself the way that you're speaking to people um people will judge you off of that and determine how they want to treat you based off of those things mm -hmm. now this is not even just with with women i i tell artists in general you know i get a lot of artists that contact me i never respond to people who curse in their message like you don't even know me but you're cursing while you're emailing me or texting me that lets me know that you're not professional you know I, I curse on my personal time but you never see me curse on my videos and everything because I, I want you to have a certain standard for me so you're gonna treat me the way you see me treat myself so I think for women it's very important to treat yourself, walk through the door with a, with a certain aura, you know, not like bougie, like, you know, I'm bougie or whatever, but, but it doesn't matter what type of man you did. It doesn't matter if he is super hood, super professional, whatever. People will see your aura off that and they will treat you accordingly. Now, some, I mean, it's certain, certain circumstances where it is just is what it is, but I've been in this industry around nothing but men, way more men than female. And, you know, as a female, I don't even think it has nothing to do with you being an attractive female. I think, you know, you're just a female, so you're going to get all kinds of stuff coming your way, you know, but I think it's all about how you present it. I, I never, never have men disrespect me. Every time someone meets me, it's always just, yo, she is just too, she cool, you know, so it's like it just eliminates everything. I think it's about how you carry yourself, man, how you present yourself, how you talk to people, you know, your body language, how you touch people, you know, a lot of that comes into play. And I think with females, you have to be real careful of how you present yourself, you know, even down to what you're wearing. Okay. If you come in with something super short, even I'm going to look, you know, so <laughs> it's like, you have to, ex you got to expect certain things. So if, if you're talking about networking, you're going to a network event, you need to dress accordingly, act accordingly, speak accordingly, talk accordingly, have have things already ready and people will look at you like, oh, okay, she about business, mm. you know? And then you got to just practice on how to curve people professionally. <laughs> you got an example of that? I would, I would love right, to hear you know, So when I'm out and people say, you know, networking events or whatever, and people are like, mm. you know, well, can I get your number? I said, no, thank you. <laughs> so they don't know how to take it because you said no thank you like what some people just be like no dan and you know you gotta say it you know say it with a smile and i'll just say no thank you and he'd be looking at me like that just threw me off you know but i'm like let's follow each other on instagram that's the new phone number like if you hit people back with a joke mm. you know especially men because men feel you know you turn them down they kind of feel away but it, it's just like you gotta learn how to curb people in the right way you don't have to be angry because somebody is trying to approach you yeah. on some other stuff that's just life you know you just gotta learn how to curve people and the more you network the more you put yourself out there the more you will learn okay you just got to get out there start having certain things that you want to talk to people when i go to a networking event it's already certain questions i know i can ask everybody what do you do how can i follow you you know are you performing it's just general questions that are like openers. So I think for artists, when you go to a networking event, you need to have a set of general questions or general topics that you can bring up with everybody that you meet. You can always ask somebody what it is that they do. And based off of what they say, oh, I'm an artist. Next question, okay, well, do you sing or rap or both? And then they'll say that, okay, well, you got some music, where can I find you? You know, it's like those opener questions that will take people's mind off of how you look, you know, I want to talk to you. You know, it gets them back into the business frame of why we're here in the first place. Mm. Okay, perfect. I love that answer, man. That was um, like what I think is interesting about what you said is one, just kind of honing in on the fact that when you're networking, you're marketing yourself out to people, right? Yeah. So really, you're branding yourself, and that's the same thing we basically tell artists. So a brand is essentially you have to put out the expectations of how people perceive you right so right. that's the first piece like you you got to brand yourself right treat your treat yourself how you want to be treated i guess you as exactly. you exactly and then that's and i also recommend for people to speak to people first especially females don't wait until someone approaches you 
when you come into a networking event, just yeah. go up to people first. Because if you let a man approach you first, it's normally going to be about because of how you look or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. But if you go up to someone first and you start that conversation, you say, hey, my name is such and such. You know, it's a networking event. So we all must be an artist or something like that, you know. So you start the conversation first. Have a business card in your hand, you know, and pass them a business card. Like, start it off first so you control the conversation. Control the conversation. Yeah. Okay. So control the conversation on top of branding yourself, how you want to be perceived. And then also make sure you have a curve in the chamber. But Right. A kind, a kind curve. <laughs> yeah, a kind curve. Let right. Them, give them some pillows to fall on. <laughs> right okay but that's i think that's gonna be really helpful um for people well i don't want to keep you for too long you've got a lot of valuable information and i as we said at the beginning at lady j bookums is her ig that's gonna be all up over on the screen all that good stuff now though um is there some final words that you would like to leave people with or where you would like to lead them to um well you know for my independent artist you know, I just want everyone to know that, you know, it's so many possible um, things out here for you guys. Um, like I said in the beginning, my my whole thing is this about knowledge. The more that you know, the more you can succeed. Mm. OK, the more that you know, the more that you can get things done on your own or the more that you uh, understand what people around you are supposed to be doing. So I just want to, you know, keep encouraging you guys to do your thing, um, to, to just learn more, grow more, and, you know, hopefully definitely be successful. Good. Beautiful. Well, and thanks always, for having me. <laughs> no problem. Of course, you're doing your thing. And I definitely would love to uh, just thought people would find a lot of value out of you. And I know, I guarantee you they did. So as always, people you know if you got some comments put that in the description below hopefully lady j will be so kind as, as to uh check out the comments and respond to anything she sees when this drops Definitely. um and other than that if you like this video go ahead hit that like button if you like it you might as well share it and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe button